from the studios of Adventist World Radio in Pune. A warm welcome to you as you join us. This is our international English service. In our program today, we bring inspirational music, health talk on principles of life that are basic. With more enjoyable music, you'll also hear God's word to enrich you spiritually. This is your host Sharad and I'm Maureen and you're listening to Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope. Let's begin our program with a song. are listening to Adventist World Radio the voice of hope from Pune India dear friend life's rich treasures such as health happiness and peace of mind are portrayed in our health talk in a new way today's society has many problems how can we cope up with them how can we enjoy health and happiness each day in the face of these influences that bombard us continually It's time to hear a health talk. Stay with us. Pneumonia. Dear listeners, the World Health Organization identifies the leading cause of death in the world. Infection of the breathing tubes and lung is a leading cause of death in the world's developing countries and the third greatest cause of death in the world as a whole. Today I want to talk to you about lung infections and how you can prevent getting them. 
I'm not talking about a common cold. I'm talking about infections of the major breathing tubes and infections of the lungs themselves or what we call pneumonia. Symptoms of pneumonia include fever and sweating, shortness of breath, a persistent cough that brings up discolored or even bloody sputum and chest pain that worsens as you breathe. The lungs are delicate tissues as you that look like a fine sponge. Normally as you breathe in, air comes into close contact with your body's blood vessel in the lung. The lung tissues actively take oxygen out of the air and put it in the red blood cells circulating in your blood vessels. The oxygen is then carried to every cell of your body to supply the energy needed to function properly. Pneumonia is an infection of these lung tissues. If you develop pneumonia, your lung tissues become swollen and they can no longer take oxygen out of the air. Everyone knows that you are deprived of oxygen for even a short time. You will die. As an example, if you are under water for as little as 5 to 10 minutes, you may die because you didn't get enough oxygen to keep the cells of your body alive. Dear listener, God created our bodies with a built-in defense system designed to f- fight infections caused by organisms such as bacteria and viruses. The defense system is called the immune system. Specialized cells in your body are constantly looking for foreign proteins such as bacteria or a virus that may have attacked us. And if an attacker is identified, the immune system builds a mechanism to destroy it. The body can heal itself if its immune system is strong. Unfortunately, infants, the elderly and the people who have poor nu- nutrition or poor health have an in- immune system that may be weakened. The system is just not working at its full potential and it can't destroy the invader quickly enough. Then the infection spreads and the patient can die. Lung infections can be caused either by a bacteria or a virus. An infection by either these organism is serious because infections caused by bacteria often require antibiotics as treatment. And antibiotics are just too expensive for many to afford. Infections by a vir- virus is dangerous because there are few medications that will destroy a virus. So the body has to fight off the infection using its own defense mechanisms. If you have the symptoms of a lung infection and you can get to a doctor, you should go because the most common cause of pneumonia is attacked by bacteria. The particular type of bacteria causing the infection needs to be identified and the proper antibiotic needs to be started. You may need extra oxygen as well as fluids by the vein to keep secretions thin enough to be cuffed up. chest therapy to loosen up secretions and medicines to widen the breathing tubes to get as much as air into the lungs as possible there's a lot of expensive therapy that even the intensive care if you have a serious widespread lung infection your chances of dying are 4 in 1 so let's talk about the most important things that we can do some concerning lung infections how do you keep from getting one in the first place most importantly wash your hands your hands are in constant contact with the very bacteria and viruses that cause pneumonia these organisms enter your body when you touch your eye or rub the inside of your nose washing your hands often and thoroughly with soap can help reduce your risk next don't smoke smoking damages your lungs natural defenses against lung infections thirdly take care of your body proper rest a diet rich in fruits vegetables and whole grain and moderate exercise all help to keep your system strong next drink lots of liquids to keep your secretions thin enough to be cuffed up finally protect others from infection if you have pneumonia stay away, away from anyone with a weak immune system when that isn't possible protect others by wearing a face mask we often hear that taking vitamins will help to prevent pneumonia so far there is little scientific evidence to support that claim native healers however have used garlic in treating lung infections for thousands of years and garlic does seem to be effective to reduce cough also it does have some effect in fighting against the bacteria that cause pneumonia so dear listeners to summarize infections of the breathing tubes or lungs are a serious health problem around the world especially in people who 
whose body defense system is weak because of poor nutrition of health in infants in the elders and in people who do not have the ability to go to a doctor for treatment if you do not know you are developing an infection in your breathing tubes or lungs go see a doctor if it is possible try to prevent getting a lung infection in the first place by washing your hands not smoking getting enough rest eating a diet rich in fruit vegetables and whole grain and by drinking lots of liquids if you have pneumonia protect others from the infection god made your body with a defense mechanism that can cure you of pneumonia if you do what you can to help it do its job thank you for our nice health talk we are sure it was hope for the despondent cheer for the sick and rest for the weary keep listening to awr it will open the door to a new experience in your life to know more on our program you are welcome to write to us on adventist world radio post box number 17 pune 411001 maharashtra india you can also email us on adventist media center at gmail.com You could also hear all our programs on our website that's on awr.org/englishprogram Before you hear God's word here's another song
time to hear God's word. Dear listener, today we are going to talk about Christian education and disciplining our children. The future of the nation lies in the proper education of its youth, wrote Erasmus, the great philosopher, many centuries ago. With this profound thought in our minds, let us dwell further into this concept and appreciate the need to impress upon the minds of all parents and vital role they play in proper discipline and education of their children. It is really one of the greatest and most important significant responsibility parents have to bear. We have a variety of religious views in the world today and many more emerge as time passes. Religious leaders preach and teach various principles of discipline and education for the youth. What is seen and heard are complex and confusing philosophical tenets regarding the character and behavior of growing up children and youth who are more baffled than anything else by the different perspectives and emphasis of these religious views. Many adults hold the view that belief that youth should be allowed to follow its own mind. A view that prevails among some adults is that even if a child develops bad habits during childhood, they, after they become teens or adolescents, will reason things out for themselves and turn away from their wrong habits and become ultimately useful men and women. A mistake. What a great mistake. If in their formative years children are allowed to form and develop various wrong habits, when they come of age, how will they change and be different? When a bean seed is sown and as the plant grows, the gardener attaches the plant to a straight stick for support and proper growth. So with our children, we must correct them when they are small and still malleable. As the saying goes, a stitch in time saves nine. If in their early years we allow or tolerate in our children the development of wrong habits, how can we think that when they mature, they will turn away from those habits? This will be the greatest error any parent can make. Parents that have allowed their children to form wrong habits will see the marks of these habits throughout the life of their children. Upon the parents lies the blame. Parents must govern their children, correct and subdue their passions. Parents should especially govern their own families and have them in good subjection. It is a biblical principle that leaders must have control over their own families before they can have any effect in their offices or workplaces, where they may be leaders or superiors. Otherwise, how will they be able to make proper decisions and enforce discipline among their subordinates. They must first have order at home and then only can their judgment and influence be effective outside it. Every child must be made to account for the schedule he keeps. Parents must know what company their children keep at all times. Dear listener, human philosophy has not discovered more than what God knows or devised a wiser plan for dealing with children than that given by our Lord. Who can better understand all the needs of our children than the Creator Himself? Who can feel a deeper interest in their welfare than He who brought them up with His own blood? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The Bible tells us children have a right to such an education and training which will make them useful, respected, and beloved members of the society. The young should be taught 
that both their present and future will depend to a great degree on the habits they form in their childhood and youth. To the great extent, parents hold in their own hands the future happiness of their children. Upon the parents rest the important work of forming the character of their children. A question is often asked, why do children of religious parents go often become uh, headstrong, defiant, and rebellious? Oftentimes, the reason is to be found in the training given at home. Both the parents must remember to also take up the responsibility to exercise proper discipline with their own children. It is then logical that parents should first learn to discipline themselves, then only they can be useful and successful with their children. Every time they lose self-control and speak and act impatiently, they sin against God. For the children are ultimately God's. Pray for and with your children before correcting them. Only then will your correction not cause them to hate you. If correction is affected in love, the children will perceive it and respond with love and obedience. Dear listener, the danger of too severe training is not advised. In families where parents strictly control their children by set rules and behavioral uh, responses, and then such rules are broken, children are incapable of reasoning, thinking, to adopt the right course of action and to decide for themselves. Such parents or teachers who are harsh and heartless in their approach to discipline will be unsuccessful in bringing forth youths with strong mental and moral power. It is strong for parents to allow their children to grow up in ignorance. Parents are the first teachers a children can have. Learning starts with parents. They should cultivate a love for books in their mind, in their children, and give them useful and interesting books, literature, and other productive reading material. They should teach them to work, to study, and to read. They should seek to elevate the minds of their children to improve their perceptions and perspectives. The mother should teach their children to obey and as they grow, to reason with them, to correct errors patiently and to point out right from the wrong. Dear listener, parents should teach their children that an idle mind is the devil's workshop. That idleness is his hunting ground. The minds of children are active and if not occupied with that which is good and useful will inevitably turn to that which is bad. Children should spend time in study and reading, in creation and work and have regular hours for physical labor. Consultants and psychologists in their researches have found that students who spend time in exercise and work attain far better grades than those who don't. Parents do not realize the importance of responsibility that rests upon you. Do you realize the necessity of guarding your children from careless, demoralizing habits? Allow your children to form only such associations as will have the right influence upon their character. Be discreet in allowing your children to be out at odd hours unless you know exactly where they are and what they are doing. Parents never treat your children with heartless sternness and do not expect them to be perfect. Never correct a child in anger but always in love because in the mixture of anger and punishment, discipline becomes subjective and results in a misunderstanding in the child as to the purpose and the objectives of that discipline. Parents should be models of truthfulness for this is the daily lesson to be impressed upon the heart of the child. 
If you want your child to be truthful, then lead them by example. God has given parents the work to form the characters of their children, and by His grace, they can accomplish this task. A field left to itself produces only thorns and thistles. Strength of character consists of two things, power of the will and power of self-control. Knowledge is power, but intellectual ability without the goodness of the heart is a power for evil. God has given us potentials to form characters. Every act of life, however in unimportant, has its influence in the formation of character. A good character is more precious than worldly positions, and the work of forming it is the noblest in which we can engage. Parents need to spend time to counsel their children because God has entrusted in them the care and nurture of their children. Children should be taught to respect and reverence the hour of prayer. Before leaving the house, the family should come together and plead fervently with God to keep them through the day. Dear listener, the destiny of our children rests to a great extent in our hands. God desires us to deal with our children in simplicity. After you have faithfully done your duty to your children, take them to God in prayer and ask them to help you. And God is more than willing and more than happy to receive and to respond to your prayers. God bless you. Let's pray. Our loving and living Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for education and discipline that we get from our parents. Let the Bible be our guide and our source of great inspiration to do good in our life. Bless us, strengthen us to be good citizens of our country. In Jesus' holy name we ask. Amen. Trace the footsteps of God through human history and see for yourself what He offered to save us. Discover the truths that can protect you from the lies of the devil. Discover truths that can change your life today and show you the change of a life without end. With this, we have almost come to the end of our program. To know more on God's Word, we would love to receive your letters on Adventist World Radio, Post Box Number 17, Pune, 411-001, Maharashtra, India. You can also write to us on Adventist Media Center at gmail.com. You may also follow all our programs on our website, that is awr.org slash English program. This is your host, Sharad. And I'm Maureen, signing off from 